kids playing and boy, praise God for your parents. Parents allowing your kids to serve and working hard and then the people who teach the piano and all the kids to play, it's a blessing. Take your Bibles, turn with me to the book, the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 32 and uh, the word of God. Oh, it is a guide, it is a comfort, it is a help, and uh, Lord, it is precious. It's the very Word of God. It's a gift, and uh, God gave it to us that we can read it, we can study it, we can believe it, we can follow it, we can live the Bible, and praise God for His Word. Praise God for His Word. Oh, praise the Lord. The book of Psalms, Psalms, a large book. 150 chapters in there, and uh, Psalm 32 is actually a psalm of David. Now, I was recently talking with a man, and uh, he was looking back over his life. It was, uh, he was looking over his life and some of the sin that he had done. And uh, he'd looked at uh, the, especially he'd gotten saved, and after he'd gotten saved, something happened. He became sort of angry, sort of bitter at Christians and uh, you know, you're saved, but you can live in sin. You're saved and you can turn away from the Lord. The Lord paid for your sins. But the least happy people in the world, I believe with all my heart, the least happy people in the world are people who have been gloriously saved, who turn their back on the Lord and spend their whole life headbutting with God. It's a miserable way to live. I've never met a happy uh, person who's been saved, who is not living for the Lord, disobeying God, or chastened of the Lord. It's a terrible, terrible thing. You get bitter, you get angry. I was talking to this man, and uh, he was telling me about how he was bitter. He was not happy with Christians. And uh, anyways, what happened was a year and a few months ago, uh, him and his wife were setting up a candle stand in the Chesapeake Jubilee. And as they're setting it up, they look to the stand next to them, and it happens to be Grace Baptist Temple. Amen. Grace Baptist, that's our church. Amen. 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 Grace Baptist Temple. And when they noticed that, he looked over at his wife, and his wife said to him, at that period of time, he is a saved man, but he's bitter and sort of angry at Christians. And he said, looked over, and his wife says, you be nice, you be nice. What ended up happening is some discussions, some of the people that were at that booth from our church began to talk with him, and the Lord began to work on his heart. Amen. And uh, that man uh, decided one morning that he was going to go to church, and he told his wife, we're going to church, you want to come? And she looked at him like, you're crazy. What happened to you? And sure enough, he did come to church. Amen. And uh, praise God, he's here tonight. Brother Mark, I'm glad you're here, here tonight, Amen. and that's a blessing right there. But, but when you're telling me that story, Brother Mark, you were talking about being saved, but when you're, you're saved and you're not walking with the Lord, you begin to, it's a miserable way to live. But when I was sitting there talking to you, Brother Mark, he had a smile on his face. He's living for the Lord. Amen. There's joy, there's happiness. There's something about being a Christian and being right with the Lord. Amen. There's something about being a Christian, and may, yeah, you may have sinned, but getting right with Him, and it's like new life again. It's a life worth living, no more chastened by God, but blessed by God. Now, this is a chapter about that. David at one time lived in sin, but this chapter is not really about living in sin. This chapter is about somebody who's gotten right with the Lord. Let's stand to read the, the Word of God. We're going to read these 11 verses. I'll read verse number 1. We'll read every other verse until we get to verse number 11. Blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto them. Thou art my hiding place. Thou, art, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. 
I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. But be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. And praise God. Uh, my sin is forgiven. You can see a man who's looking back. And he's looking back at a time that he had gotten right with the Lord. And he looked back and his sin is forgiven. He'd gone from under the, maybe the cursing, the chastening of the Lord, back to the blessing of the Lord. And it's a joyous time, a glorious time, a time uh, when you have new life again, a time when you have a purpose again, a time when you really have the blessings of the Lord uh, again. My sin is forgiven. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you very much, Lord. This is a wonderful, wonderful truth that you've given us here in Psalm chapter 32. And Lord, I pray that you help us to look and be reminded of David and his life and how he had forgiveness. And Lord, I pray that you help us if we get to that point in our life. As Christians, we do stray. We do turn from you, Lord. And we're under your chastening, Lord. Help us to be reminded of Psalm chapter 32 that there is hope. And the hope is in your forgiveness, Lord. Lord, we need you. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Oh, David. This is a psalm of David. And uh, you know David. David uh, killed Goliath. David became the king's son-in-law. David was a man after God's own heart. David was under the persecution of Saul, running for his life. Uh, but David, through it all, was a mighty man of valor. He was uh, anointed by God to be the king of Israel. He was blessed of the Lord, was he not? You can look and read in the book of First and Second Samuel as you're reading about the life of David. Woo! He is a man that God is blessing. Yes, he went through some valleys of the shadow of death, but the Lord blessed David. He eventually came to be the king of Israel. And next thing you know, the kingdom began to expand. And what a mighty kingdom, what a blessed king. We know the story of David, right? Amen. And we also know that David was an imperfect man. David did uh, some awful things, some wicked things, and we always, when we begin to think of David and the wicked sin that he did, we uh, begin to lean back and think about how he had sinned in not going to war. Uh, we see as he sinned when he committed that awful sin of adultery with Bathsheba. Uh, we see then how that sin began to steamroll, began to snowball down into a worse sin, and uh, began to harden his heart. He killed Uriah, and then he began to live in his sin. And yes, he's the king, but he's no longer blessed of the Lord. Yes, he's a, uh, an example. Look at King David. He's the one that killed uh, Goliath right there. And the children would still look to him and uh, say, that's my king. They didn't know what was going on the inside. But on the inside, there was inner turmoil. There was times of, of uh, great distress and anger. And Nathan the prophet went to him and said, thou art the man. By the way, that moment is key in his life. Thou art the man. Thou art the sinner. Thou art the one that has a hardened heart. Uh, thou art the one that is bitter. Thou art the one that is struggling right now. Thou art the one that has taken that sheep of the poor person. You took Bathsheba from Uriah. Thou art the man. By the way, it's a monumental moment in his life because he was confronted with his sin. But what was he to do? And here, you can almost see when you read Psalm 32 that David is looking back to that moment, that moment when uh, Nathan pointed at him. But he's not looking back at it in a negative light. He's looking back and say, Whoo, praise God, my sins are forgiven. Praise God, I am right in relationship with the Lord. Praise God, I am no longer bitter. Hey, praise God, I'm no longer under the chastening, the curse of God. Praise God, I didn't continue in that sin. Amen. Praise God that I'm on the winning side again. Amen. I'm blessed Amen. of God again. Amen. Now we look back here in the first two verses, so sort of give the overview of this chapter. And it's, it's awesome uh, the way it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. forgiven. Uh, look at that. Whose sin is 
Blessed is the man unto, unto whom the Lord imputeth not, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Now, let's read that again. If you read this again, let's see this. Blessed is he whose transgression is, Amen. whose sin is. Amen. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not, Amen. and in whose spirit there is no guile. Boy, he's looking back, and you can almost see him looking back to that day he got right with the Lord. Psalm 51 is that, uh, almost have mercy upon me. We hear that quite often. Uh, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And it is the prayer of him getting right with God. But here he's looking back at almost the time when he got right with the Lord. He went from that bitterness, and he, he's saying, Oh, man, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. And you think about it, transgression is forgiven, uh, covered, uh, imputeth not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no guile or trickery, craft or cunningness. His heart is right with the Lord. He's looking back, praise God, I laid it all before the Lord. I confessed my sin. I righted my relationship with the Lord. Praise God, I'm blessed. I am forgiven. Amen. Well, that is good. By the way, that verse right there, blessed is the man uh, in whom uh, the Lord will not impute sin is also found in Romans chapter 4, verse 8. And David was looking back when he righted that relationship with the Lord. His sins were forgiven. And you can see him as he's looking back. He begins to write this psalm, obviously inspired by God. But it's a song. It's a song of deliverance. It's a song of victory. It's a song of forgiveness. He's looking back and saying, Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, man, I could have gone deeper. I could have gone the other way. This is a very important sermon. Amen. Because in truth, we're all imperfect. Right. How many of you are saved? Amen. Yeah, amen. That's good. Gloriously saved by the blood of the crucified one. That's wonderful. You're saved. But in truth, we still have the wretchedness inside of us. Right, right. And there is times when you'll choose to sin. And sometimes you'll allow maybe a day to go by and you don't get right with the Lord. And two days and next thing you know, you begin to chase in the Lord. He begins to chase in you and you become, start getting bitter. You, you get a little agitated when you hear the Bible. You get a little agitated when you hear people praying. You get a little agitated at the sermons. You get a little agitated with things because your relationship's not right with the Lord. Now we think about that, that thing happens to all of us. And this is a sermon that looks back and says, Oh, boy, praise God, when I went the wrong direction, I got right with the Lord. Amen. My sins are forgiven. Now, now it begins to describe it in detail. Look at verses 3 and 4. Look at how, how uh, he begins to remember back. And he says, When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. Think about that. That, that. That's, wow. He's looking back for the time when he lived in sin. He's looking back at the time of how difficult life was being chased into the Lord. Do, do you understand this? How difficult, how miserable, how awful it is being a Christian who is headbutting with God, being a Christian who doesn't have his uh, relationship right with the Lord. We, we see this throughout the Bible. Do you remember Jonah? He was told to go to Nineveh. Jonah, go to Nineveh. What did he do? He went the opposite direction. Do you remember him? Yeah, he's a, a man of God. He's actually a prophet. And there he is on a, a boat the opposite direction. And next thing you know, the storm begins to come and they cast Lot. It's Jonah. Throw me overboard. They throw him overboard. And there God has a great big whale to swallow him up. Now, was he happy in that whale's belly? No, sir. Was he like joyous in the midst of that water? <laughs> you made the, that, that had to have been an experience. How many of you would like to see that in replay one day? I'd like to. I don't want to be in the belly with them, but I want to see the replay. And uh, praise the Lord. Do you remember in Jonah chapter 2, the way he described that? Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. Mine affliction unto the Lord. Mine affliction. Why is he under affliction? Because he's not right with the Lord. Why is he under affliction? Because he is in, living in sin. Uh, why is he in affliction? Because he's not doing the will of the Lord. And then he says, of mine affliction of the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, 
That's interesting. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. He describes the time he got right with God, but at the time he described it as being in the belly of hell. In other words, when you're not right with the Lord, you're miserable. When you're not right with the Lord, you're headbutting with God. You're like that moisture that turned into the drought of summer. You're like the, the Lord where he's waxed, his bones waxed old through the roaring all the day long. It's like the Lord pounding on you and pounding on you and pounding on you and pounding on you and pounding on you, pounding on you and pounding on you. Maybe nobody else sees it, but you know it. Pounding on you and pounding on you and pounding on you. It's like a constant bang, isn't it? Ouch. Do you remember Peter? How many remember Peter? Yeah. Well, you remember when he denied the Lord? <clears throat> he was told he was going to. Remember in chapter 13 of the book of John where the Lord tells him about how he's going to. He said, oh, everybody else will forsake you, but I won't. And the Lord said, oh, yes, you will. Yes, you will. And sure enough, he did. Denied the Lord not once, twice, but three times. <laughs> how did that make him feel? Boy, in the midst of that, the Bible tells us about the pain. He says, uh, it says like this, and Peter said, Man, I know, that, uh, not what thou say I, I know not what thou sayest, and immediately, while yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. He's miserable. Why? The chastening of the Lord, the chastening of the Lord. When you're in sin, you're miserable, you're miserable, you're miserable, you're miserable, you're miserable. You don't like the preaching of God's word. You don't like the hearing God's word. You don't like to be around Christians. You don't like being in a Christian home. You want to run and get away from all, but you can't get away from all. You're like the prodigal son in a faraway land, but you still can't get away. You're drowning in your misery. And that's the way David is describing it. Oh, living in sin miserable praise the lord brother mark in the way you told me that story right there and here you are those christians right next to you great i made you happy and you you're the one who told me that you really deep down inside what made him miserable because he's bitter on the inside and, and you think about that we've been there right. we've been there right. well there's a story by the way and uh thinking about this a mother and this is so sad Heartbroken by the death of her three-year-old son, wrapped his body in plastic and put it in the attic and fooled her family for four years that he was staying with friends. Astonished police said, this uh, discovery was made when a policeman called at the family's house on the outskirts of, uh, of a town in Belgium and asked to speak to the child in a routine matter. The mother told him that the boy was staying with a friend, but broke down and confessed, Tom died and gave the date. I found him dead in his bed and was frightened and wrapped his body in plastic bags. It's in the attic. That's a sad story. It continues on right there. But here, she knew it was wrong to wrap that body and put it in the attic. She didn't, and maybe she didn't have it. But think about that. She had to live with that the next day. And she had to live with the next day. She had to live with the next day. A year goes by and it's still constantly on her mind. It's wearing her out. She is having to live with that misery and that pounds on her. Nobody else knows, but she knows. And that's what sin does to you when we're living in sin, the uh, chasing the Lord. Maybe nobody else around you knows, but you know inside you're bitter. But praise God, verse number five, look at this. Praise God, I got right with God. He looks back, he says, I got right with God. And read this, this is, I acknowledged, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Woo! Think about that. that. That's an awesome verse. He's saying, at that period of time, I stopped and I acknowledged my sin. I stopped and I no longer tried to hide my sin from God. I couldn't hide it anyways. I got right with him. I confessed my transgressions before. By the way, that's humility right there. It's having us to say, I'm wrong. By the way, that's, it's hard for us. It's so hard. I, our pride, our pride. We don't like to be wrong. We don't like to admit we messed up. We don't like to admit that we've gone the wrong direction. But this is a, a verse right here to remind us that even David looking back and he's saying, boy, that time I finally humbled myself. Thou art the man. Yeah, Nathan's not my problem. God, I'm the problem. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And he begins to talk about my sin, my transgressions. And we hear that preacher, I preach that a lot, but he acknowledged his transgression. He looked and said, I am the problem. 
He got right with God. He got right with God. Oh, praise God, he got right with the Lord. And we look at that, how he got right with the Lord. And uh, we think about 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Often our sin, we allow it to linger and it gets harder with each day because we've dug it a little bit deeper and we've dug the hole farther and we keep digging and we keep digging and we keep digging and we get to the point we say, there's no hope for me. Yes, there is. Amen. There's hope for you. Yeah. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us your sins. Boy, there's hope for you. There's hope for David. There's hope for you. And that's so important. David looks back and says, I got right with God. Do you remember Simon Peter? Remember that? Boy, denied the Lord. Three days later, Jesus uh, rose from the grave. Praise God. And uh, we think about uh, a little bit later, he went up to Galilee and began to fish. It describes that event in the book of John chapter 21. And there he's on a boat. And uh, it begins to describe how, uh, therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher coats upon him, for he was naked, and he had cast himself into the sea. And you imagine him seeing the Lord, he goes, oh boy. And you can almost see him, uh, oh boy. He's miserable. Yes, sir. Miserable. It begins to describe it. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, 150 and three. And for all there was so many, yet was not the net broken. A few verses later, God begins to, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ begins to talk to him. He says, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith them, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto them, feed my lambs. And you can see at that moment that uh, Simon Peter is getting right with the Lord. It's a moment when he is looking back and his sins are forgiven. It's a, and by the way, we see that the, the follow through of that because not a few days later, he's preaching at Pentecost. Amen. Woo! Yeah. Praise God. He goes from being miserable and sinning to right with the Lord. Yeah. By the way, uh, look at, well, let me, let me read the, the verse number six. Look at verse six. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto, unto him. And, you know, you think about it, everyone that's godly shall pray unto thee. And, and you think about it, every one of us has an opportunity to go to the Lord and get our sins forgiven. Um, look at this, verse number seven. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt camp, com, compass. Everybody's saying compass, compass, compass. Uh, me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. It's a quiet crowd tonight. It's okay. I got enough energy for us all tonight. Amen. It's good. Thou art my hiding place. Amen. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. And basically what he's saying, he's saying, Woo! It is wonderful to be delivered. It's wonderful to have my relationship with, right with God. It's wonderful that God can use me again. Oh, it is wonderful. It is wonderful. You can almost see uh, Simon, uh, not Simon Peter, but David looking back and saying, Oh, praise God, I write in my relationship with the Lord. Yes, I do have consequences for those sins, but praise God, I am forgiven. I'm no longer living under the chastening of God. I'm under the blessing of God. It's like, woo, glory, turning point in his life. Amen. Amen. Right. Uh, it's a story I've told here quite a few times, but it's, it, it's, it was a big moment in my life. I used to go fishing at Wanaka Lake, Wanaka Lake in Colorado, and it was in Lafayette. It's about a mile and a half from my house, and I'd go up there in summertime, and uh, you get their mosquitoes. Oh my, mosquitoes! But what I would do is I realized that if I took my shoes off, I could wade out in the water a little bit and get to the good casting spots, and uh, I would catch. Uh, lots of fish, lots of fish. It was so fun. It was fun. And one time I was wading out on one of the back side of the, uh, the lake. There was these tumbleweeds and I got out the, the side right there and you had to be careful as you're wading out there. And I stepped on something and it hurt. I'm boom, like that. And I cast out, I was catching fish. So I didn't think about it. A week goes by, two weeks go by, and I'm starting to limp. My foot's starting to hurt. And you know, like kids are, we, we may be hurt, but we don't think about why I'm hurting. And uh, we were going garage sailing on that Saturday morning. I remember we were up close to Wanaka Lake over there. And uh, we got out there and my mom looked over me and said, what are you limping for? And I said, well, I, I, uh, I don't know. 
And she said, well, let me see your foot. And so I took my sock off, and I had a blood infection that was going up my leg. And uh, she looked at that, and she says, well, that's not good. Wait till your dad comes home a little bit later on today. And so I remember that afternoon, uh, looking at that, I kept my sock off of there, and I began to try to dig whatever was out of there myself, and it was painful. It was, you know, it was, it was gooey and nasty, and uh, it was painful. And then my dad came home. He said, son, it, it sounded like that. There was alarms going off, all sorts of stuff. And uh, we had a dog, Tippy, and there were some squeaky toys, you know, ear, ear, ear. And so I grabbed one of those, I put it in my mouth, and I put my foot up to my dad, and my dad just dug in. <laughs> and I remember him digging in there, and I remember, I couldn't scream because I was chewing on the dog toy, and uh, very, very painful. Uh, but he got it out. There was a piece of wood way down in there, and he pulled it out of there. And I'll, I never forget the feeling. It was like, ugh. It was painful, it was rough, but it felt so good to be out of there. You know, it just felt like a new foot immediately. And that's the way it is when you get right with the Lord. Sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's ooey and gooey, sometimes you got to get a dog toy and put it in your mouth. Uh, maybe not, but <laughs> try it. I mean, go ahead. I don't mind, uh, but praise the Lord. Uh, but get right with the Lord. Get right with the Lord. Good right. Up. It's wonderful to be delivered. It's wonderful to be delivered. It's wonderful to be on a right relationship with the Lord. I want to shout it from the mountaintops. It is wonder. I will. It's wonderful to be right with the Lord. It is wonderful to be back on His side under His graces, under His blessing. It's wonderful to not get chastened by Him anymore. It's wonderful to have a good relationship where you enjoy the preaching of God's Word again. You enjoy the Bible again. You enjoy the Christian home again. You enjoy the Christian fellowship again. It is wonderful to be bright with the Lord, is it not? Amen. It is so wonderful. Now, we go to this next part. Look at verse number 8. Look at this. I, now, I like this. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou, sh thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And th this is interesting. I got right with the Lord. Uh, David needed some instruction along the way. And God said, I'll, I'll take care of you. And in truth, just to sum, sum that up, praise God we have an instruction book that guides us. Praise God, we have an instruction book that helps us and leads us and shows us the right way. Psalm 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. And uh, praise the Lord. We, there's a lot of commotion going on. Uh, Brother George, your car's gone. Don't worry about it. We had a, and somebody stole it, and so you got insurance. It's good to go. And so you're good. Now listen to this. A certain Christian traveler was packing his suitcase about to proceed on a journey. He remarked to a friend, he says, there is still a little corner left open in which I desire to pack uh, a few extra things. I want to get a guidebook and a lamp and a mirror and a telescope and a book of poems and a number of biographies and a bundle of old letters and a hymn book, a sharp sword and a small library containing 30 or so volumes and all of these articles must occupy my space of about six inches by 12 inches. A friend looked over at him like that and you already know what I'm going to say, but he said, how are you going to manage that? He said, that's easy, my friend. The Bible contains all of those. Yeah. By the way, that is awesome. The Bible does. Uh, the Bible is a wonderful guidebook, and it helps you and me. Now, these are the last little part almost here, verse number 9 and 10. And this is an important part, 9, verse 9. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord mercy shall come pass him about. Uh, that, that's awesome. In other words, get right with God. Amen. Don't be the horse that's fighting with that bridle and uh, fighting with God that keeps under the chastening of the Lord. It's a call right there. David's looking back and he's saying, Woo, praise God I got right with the Lord. And he's shouting out to all of us who are living in the chastening of the Lord, not right with the Lord, saying, come back home. Don't be as the horse or as a mule. Come back to the Lord. Get away from that chastening. Hey, they, uh, it's so important. Mercy should compass them about. Come back to the mercy of the Lord. Get your relationship right with the Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Boy, David said, I got right with God, you should too. Tired of fighting with God. But can you, you ever been there? You ever been there? Maybe you're there today. It'll wear you out. Fighting with the Lord as a Christian, it'll wear you out. It'll wear you plumb out. No rest night or day. You just, it's a miserable, miserable place to be. It's a terrible place to be. And, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It's like uh, hitting your head against a wall. That hurts. It hurts. That was not very smart. You ever seen things that don't make sense? Yeah, that, uh, yeah you just saw one. That didn't make any sense right there. Uh, praise the Lord. Doesn't make no sense at all. In other words, get right with the Lord. Get right with the Lord. Get right with the Lord. You know, whether you're a young man or an old man, uh, you can get right with the Lord. And you're, 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 this is the same with a six-year-old as it is with an 80-year-old. A six-year-old can have struggles with the Lord as an 80-year-old can. It uh, doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter whether you're educated or uneducated. Uh, when you are chastened by the Lord, it's a miserable place to be. Just get right with Him. Don't dig the hole deeper. Amen. This Psalm 32 is crying out to you. Then this last part, I like it, verse number 11. Be glad in the Lord. <laughs> Rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, Amen. all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. Shout for joy. Shout for joy. Boy, that getting right with the Lord, that right relationship with the Lord, it leads to a little bit of a shout. It leads to be that joy. Do you remember Sunday night joy? It leads to happiness. It leads to the fruit of the Spirit. Now, we know that. How are you doing? How are you doing? Are you saved? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's good. But in truth, in a room this many people, probably there are some here even this night. You're saved. You may even smile on the outside, but on the inside... You've been running from the Lord. You know you like the preaching of God's word right now. I mean, you know it. You don't like it. When you're not right with the Lord, you don't like the preaching of God's word because thy word is like a hammer. Break the rate, rock in pieces. It's miserable. Shines a light on your sin. And you think about that. If you're here right now and you're not right with the Lord, boy, what are you waiting for? God is calling saying, come home. Come home. You can have forgiveness. David's crying out from the Psalms saying, hey, I remember when Nathan the prophet said, thou art the man. I didn't like it, but I got right with the Lord. Boy, praise God I did. Amen. And that's such an awesome thing. Are you forgiven or are you bitter? Remember, confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. By the way, you're all right with the Lord. Praise God. You got a little bit of a shout in you. There's some joy in you. It's Amen. wonderful being right in that relationship with the Lord. That's good. Amen. Amen. Woo. Uh, remember this. Psalm chapter 32. You get a little uh, weary on the road of sin. By the way, it can happen to all of us. Yes, sir. Boy, read this psalm regularly to remind yourself that you have a chance to be forgiven again. Yes, uh, not far from Rochester, New York, there is a cemetery with a grave that has inscribed on the tombstone one word. And it's interesting, there's no date of birth, there's no date of death, there's not even the name of the person. There's just one word, but it's an awesome word. And the word, the only word on that tombstone is one that we all hopefully, hopefully can relate with. It's the word forgiven. Forgiven. There's nothing better than being in the right relationship with the Lord, forgiven by the King of kings and Lord of lords because of His mercy. Let's praise. Dear Father in heaven, we love you.